would like to do is show you the contiguous data so when every time we get a second or a thousand points here I would like to put these blocks together and store those off to a file so that's what we're going to do next the way I'm going to do this is I'm going to create a little bit of room stretching some things out here and I'm going to put down what's called a stacked sequence structure so let's just put this around all the stuff that's inside here and then I'm going to click right on it and I'm going to say add a frame after so the first thing that happens is we come in and we do this and that's just like we had written it in the first place the second thing we'll do now is the new stuff so we're going to take the DAC property node, the read property node and we're going to wire it in so we'll connect here wire this one in and I want some status information so I'll click on that and I'll choose to tell me the current read position. Now if the current read position crosses a 1000 point boundary then I want to go back into the buffer and get that block and then store it off into a file. So what we're going to do is we'll make a little bit of room here. If I can get this. Stress this out a little bit. And what we're going to do is take this current read position and compare it to the 1000 point block. And the way we're going to do that is go in to do some basic mathematics. We'll get a remainder and quotient, and we'll tie this in. And I'll bring up the help window so you can see what I'm connecting up to here. I want to know when this thing is crossing the 1,000-point boundary, so I'll use a remainder and quotient. Basically, I'll divide by 1,000, and we'll take the quotient. If it's less than 1,000, the quotient will be 0. If it's greater than 1,000, it'll be 1. If it's greater than 2,000, it'll be 2. And I want to see if this quotient now is ever greater than what it was the last time I read it. And the way that we do that is by creating a shift register. So I click on the border. I come over here and take the, this quotient value. And I'm going to wire it into the shift register. And then I'm going to go and compare the previous iteration with what it is now and see if the new value is greater than the old value. So the way I do that is with a compare. And here's the greater than. So we'll take the new value that comes out of here. We'll see if it's greater than the old value, which I get by coming up to here into my shift register. And I'll wire this in. And if it's greater than it, that means I just crossed a 1,000 point boundary. So let's go back into our structures and get a case structure here. And we'll put this down. If I have just crossed the boundary, what I'd like to do now is I'd like to go and reset my, my read pointer and that is right here in the read property node again the same one that we've been using so at this point we'll wire in our information to the property node the next thing that we'll do is I want to do relative to so I'll create a constant there and a relative to is going to be relative to the very first sample in the buffer so that's just the way that we want it to be and we'll leave this sit like that. The offset though is going to be whatever this quotient was, whatever the value before was, and we're going to take that and we're going to say if that thing is whatever value, we'll multiply it by a thousand and that's going to be our offset. So if that thing was zero, we'd multiply it by a thousand, we'd have a zero offset. So let's go ahead and get a multiply. We'll put it in here. We'll take that value, whatever it was before, and I'm going to multiply it by create a constant again of 1000 and that'll be our offset so that goes back into the buffer and then it fast forwards up to 1000 points just before the very end of the buffer and then that's what we're going to read out at this point I want to actually perform the read so I'll put the read function in here and it auto connects I'll go and tell it multiple single channel but multiple samples give us out the waveform information and then at this point I want to write it to a file so now we're going to go back into programming and we're going to get the TDMS functions to do this for us. First thing that we want to do is actually go and create a file if it doesn't exist. So we're going to set the operation to be a constant which says open or create it if it doesn't already exist. The next thing that we're going to do is create a constant here which is the file path. And the file path is going to be see if I can paste that in there. Yes, we've already got this. And then I can type in the name of this. Let's call it this test2.tdms. So that's fine. So that's going to go and create that file if it needs to, and then open it if it already exists. The next thing that we want to do is the TDMS write. So we'll take this, and we'll drop this in. And then I'm going to wire the data that comes out of our read up into the TDMS data. 
So there it is, it's connected. The other thing I have to tell it is how many points to read coming out of here. So I'm going to set that now too. So I'll create a constant and we'll tell it to read a thousand points out of that thing every time. This was the file path and I need to make sure that it opens up the right file so we'll send the file path in. And that's going to do all of our data writes and that's just fine. The last thing we want to do on the file I.O. is actually go out and read it. And we're going to read this whole thing when it's all done. So we'll take the file path information. Once the loop ends, that's why I ran it through the loop right here, making sure that once the loop is ends, then we'll actually go and we'll read back out of that file. And I want to take that information and send it up to our waveform graph right here. So take the data, wire it up, and now we'll see it on our waveform graph. And then finally, it would be good to close that file off so we'll just set this here and that'll close it down and that's good to go. So we've got everything. Let's go ahead and close some of this stuff down. We'll clean up our diagram a little bit. You can take a look at this and we'll go off and run this now. Here's the first thing that we do which is just to show us the data and then here we go and see if we've crossed a boundary. If so, we've offset, come into the buffer and then we've displayed it on the front. So let's go ahead and restart this. So there's our data. You see I can disturb it again. If I take my test lead, come over here and we write it, we can see that we're registering that value. And this is going off and running. We've done 100,000 iterations already of this loop, so the, the loop is running fast. And when I hit the stop button, it'll go off and it'll read that file. And you can see all of the data. Now if we zoom in on this, you'll actually get all the fine detailed information that's in there. But this goes and shows you how you can acquire the data. You can have a fast running loop that in this case ran 140,000 iterations and also store all that data contiguously and then read it back. And this is how you do this with LabVIEW and the DACMX VIs in NI data acquisition.